Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi, Daniel. Hi. Hi. Yeah, it's lovely to see you all. Um, I wish I could see you in person. Um, I wish I could be sharing your Mexican feast as well. It sounds incredible. Um, but I, well, I shall um, enjoy it vicariously, let's say. Um, so yeah, that will be a nice um, chance for you all to catch up and have some, celebrate the end of summer, maybe start a new beginning, something like that. Um, yeah, I've met some of you before, so it's lovely to see some familiar faces. Um, for those of you I haven't spoken with already, it's nice to see you now, talk to you now. I'm going to go through um, a PowerPoint uh, for the next 30 minutes or so. If uh, you have any questions um, as I'm going through, perhaps pop them in the chat. If it's something kind of urgent, like uh, you can't hear me or you can't see something, I'll try and obviously deal with that as we go through. If it's something that's a more general question, um, then we can talk about them at the end. Um, so yeah, I'm going to talk through some of my curatorial projects mainly. If there's time, I might talk about some writing as well. Um, but as this is a curatorial residency, I suppose that's the thing to focus on. So as Jenny said, I am a, well, I wear a whole lot of different hats. Um, but I'm based in in Birmingham, in the middle of the um, in the middle of England. I am from here. Um, I've lived in some other cities, but I'm very much rooted in in the West Midlands region. Um, and I work for a number of organisations, but also have a variety of strands to a freelance practice as well. Um, so I work tentatively, I work as an artist sometimes, um, but more often as a writer, curator and professional development um, person. I was going to say expert, but that sounds a bit, a bit grandiose, doesn't it? So professional development, something. <laughs> That's the area that I often work with anyway. So I have lots of kind of clients, um, so be that organisations, individual artists. Um, and a lot of the kind of research that I've done with the number of the hats that I wear has been about place particularly, which is why it's a shame not to be able to be in Dublin, of course. Um, I've not visited the city before, so hopefully at some point I will, I will get to you. Um, some of you, I, might, I think I mentioned some of this uh, when we were talking in person, well, not in person, on, you know, in our one-to-ones, in our virtual studio visits, but I was also supposed to come in May, um, supposed to come in April 2018 originally, and then I was supposed to come in May 2020. <laughs> so, yeah, well, on one day I shall get to you. So anyway, I'm going to share my screen and go through this PowerPoint. As I say, if you have any questions, you can pop them in the chat. If it's something urgent, I'll try and, and um, answer them straight away. If not, then we'll, we'll do it at the end. So I'm going to just share my screen, if you bear with me a second. So I'm hoping that you can see a slide that says my name on. Yeah, Jenny's nodding, good. <laughs> yep, so anyway, this is me, and uh, that's the date today. <laughs> so I'm going to start with, um, with an exhibition that I so some more kind of recent exhibitions that I've been involved with. So these are some images, installation views from an exhibition I curated in May, May and June 2019, which feels like an awful long time ago now. This took place in um, a artist-run studios and exhibition space called KH7 in Aarhus in Denmark. And I know that some of you have connections to Aarhus probably because of Pam, who visited as a curator in residence before. Um, so I also know Pam, she's wonderful. Um, and I visited um, Aarhus, I think, but initially in 2017, and I've kind of maintained a, a dialogue with various individuals and organisations um, since then, since visiting in the City of Culture year. So this is an exhibition um, called Haifa, um, which was a solo show, first international, international solo show from a West Midlands artist called Fred Hubble. He works in a whole variety of different media, um, you know, sculpt, sculpture, photography, drawing, video, painting. He works in all of them. Can't think of anything he doesn't work in. Maybe digital. <laughs> but apart from that, it's, it's, all, it's all the other media. So his, his exhibition was very much about responding to, to place. He hadn't... Um, visited the city or, the, or Denmark 
prior to the exhibition taking place and therefore made a lot of work on site in response to um, walks he would take um, and in response to um, the various things he encountered. Um, so these are a couple of insulation views. So the, the one on the right hand side, I don't know what kind of sense of scale actually thinking about it, this comes across in, in isolation, but um, the, the mask um, shipping container is about this big with um, a stone placed on top. So it's kind of, it's kind of like a, I suppose it's from a, a um, model railway or something along those lines, it's like a miniature version, but with the rock placed on top. Outside of the um, exhibition space is a working is working factories, shipping um, yards, not shipping yards, um, yeah, like dist international distribution kind of yards. And um, so you can see these containers from, from the window. It's in a very industrial, industrial part of the city. Um, the table has got a number of different items collected and, and made and found um, while on site. Um, again, some more, more installation views. You can't really see, some of them are quite small, so the installation views um, don't give a kind of full impression, hence the, some of the detailed shots. But there were about 50 pieces of work in the show, so quite, quite an intensive kind of process um, of, of making and, and thinking about how an English person responds to um, to being in a new country and all of the kind of mistranslations and problems of that, as well as the possibilities and opportunities for creatively misinterpreting things and, um, and finding your way around. This is a, another exhibition that I um, weirdly curated at pretty much exactly the same time. Um, this though took place um, in a part of, part of the West Midlands called the Black Country, which is a um, former industrial um, heartland of, of England. Um, so the black refers to the, the soot and the pollution <laughs> rather than rather than anything else. Um, but interestingly, um, this, this exhibition again very much relates to place and to migration stories to the artist Jasper Bora's uh, family, their kind of uh, heritage, their legacies, their individual stories, their unique stories. The exhibition took place um, outdoors, as you can as you can see, um, and Jessica was commissioned um, to produce family portraits. So I curated the exhibition um, with her and for her. Um, so these these um, sorry, I'm just thinking. You probably can see all the things over the top, can't you? There we go. That's better. My apologies. Um, yeah, these are three sided uh, three sided structures that enable you to walk around and of course view the, the various members of her family tree. Um, alongside those are published um, archive images on, on the wall in the background, the brick wall, and then um, texts that reflect some of their experiences from, from you know, the elders within her family to the babies. Um, and it was part of a festival called Blast, which took place in the various towns of the Black Country last year. I also commissioned for the same festival, um, sorry, curated for the same festival, a project called Stories of Home, which was by a photographer called John Tonks, who's, who's quite well known. He was commissioned over quite a long period of time by Mortis Story, who run Blast, to produce photographic portraits of the Polish and Eastern European communities in Samwell, of which there are many, and has produced a series of particularly stunning um, works which were shown in a former shop unit um, and, and again explore individuals stories the kind of family relationships um, and thinking about his his place as a um, as a white British person kind of speaking with Eastern European communities who are of course um, encountering difficulties and opportunities while, while they're based here in the region. Um, going back slightly earlier, this is a, a still from a film made by an artist called Mitra Sabori, who is an American Iranian artist. She did a residency at a, um, 
a gallery and studios that you might have heard of in Birmingham called, called Grand Union. So this was another of my curatorial projects. So she completed a two week residency um, at, the, at the studios, uh, making new work in response to site, in response to her being an American um, in the UK and exploring very much like Fred was doing, um, exploring the materials, the places, the kind of bodily encounters um, that one might have in a new in a new place and the vulnerabilities actually that that involves. So this for the context, the the space that the gallery is in is in a part of Birmingham called Digbeth, which is a particularly again a very industrial area, but has a big cluster of artists uh, working there in, in galleries and studios. So she did a residency in 2015 and then 2016 she we presented a solo show of her work. So this is a performative piece where she used um, elements of the architecture to squeeze oranges for the audience who were attending on the, the PV. The PV, I wonder when we're going to have PVs again, that would be nice. Um, this is behind, you can't really see on this, on this one, but on the, the windows are a particular feature of the gallery space. This is what the windows looked like in the exhibition. Um, she coated all of them with, with silicone. It's designed to very much look like a kind of Vaseline type bodily substance. So this was smeared onto, um, onto the windows that kind of gave a, a kind of clouded view of, of the, the city behind. You can see the industrial area, you can see um, the kind of shopping area just up the road but a very different view is, is offered of the city through this material intervention. Um, that one shows it a bit more, a bit more clearly. So she also uh, presented five, um, five, oops, gone too far, five videos within the piece. So there were four in, in corners of, of the room and then one which was in a slightly smaller, um, sorry, there wasn't five, there were more than five. There were four main ones and then a series of a very small one shown on um, tablet sized, uh, well on tablets, <laughs> so they were on a much smaller scale in a separate, in a separate room and again the videos um, detail some of her experiences, encounters and navigations as she explores the, the city with, with, her, with her skin and with her senses. Um, another um, exhibition that was, that I curated which was New Commissions was in a National Trust property in, in Worcestershire, which isn't too far away from, from Birmingham. Um, this exhibition um, is, well, yeah, it's a, heritage, it's a heritage location, as you can as you can see from the architecture. In days gone by, these niches in the wall had used to contain neoclassical sculptures, and I was asked to, cure, to invite our contemporary artists to respond to that history, but also the histories of, of the building as it's gone through various changes. Um, so you can see four of the artworks there, and there's one here. This, this one, the, the limbs of the sculpture are inflated with fans, and they have like a, you know, as you can, as you might expect, they have like a wobbly, a lovely wobbliness to them. <laughs> So I also work um, as a curator for Coventry Biennial, and this is our logo. Um, and the mate, so we the last iteration of the biennial happened in nineteen. So the next one is in twenty one. So we'll be opening October twenty one. So at the moment we've been doing lots of the research, um, lots of studio visits, lots of kind of unpacking of what um, the exhibitions will be, particularly in light of. Uh, you know the events of, of of this year, which we've all which we've all been through. So over the summer, I've been um, working with a number of artists who we had already commissioned. So one of those is is Grace Doritu, who's working on a new commission, um, which is likely to be in collaboration with another gallery called Black Beauty. This is um, a, a studio, um, not studio, a, a kind of site shot set shot um, that was undertaken quite recently in Spain. So she's one of the artists that we've announced. Um, another is a young black artist called Ryan Christopher who's based in the city 
again, like, like Fred Hubble, he works across every media imaginable. Um, and he's really prolific and talented and we're particularly keen um, at the biennial to be working with established and then more emerging artists, particularly those who are kind of root based in the city and in the region. Um, because that kind of legacy and that nurturing of talent is, of course, critical. So this is one of his paintings called Armin. Um, and over the summer, we produced a number of publications. I think we've got, we've had three so far. This one, this one, Communicate 2, is a kind of multi, um, multifaceted one. So it include this one particularly included new commissions. So it was thinking about artists' instructions and the histories of those. Um, and we commissioned four um, women and non-binary artists who have connections to Coventry to produce artists' instructions, essentially. So those took the form of short stories, meditations, um, images, and these things are printed. You can sign up to the mailing list and be, be sent them for free. But they also, of course, exist as digital, digital things as well. So they've kind of got that reach. Um, so the Communique One, we published some thinking, I think it was, maybe that was like June. I can't remember now. It, it, this summer has <laughs> been a little bit strange, hasn't it? I think it was around June time. And that's where we kind of spoke, um, tried to initially unpack the research that we'll be sharing um, sorry, the research that is influencing our thinking for the October 21 launch. So there are three strands of, of um, research that are influencing, which you, can, which you can read about in all three of the communiques that we've produced so far. So they are thinking about three forgotten moments within, within Coventry's art history and kind of wider history. So the first of those, the earliest of those is Art and Language, the group Art and Language, who were formed in Coventry and Warwickshire and taught at the then Coventry Polytechnic, um, bringing people like Sol Lewitt to, to come and lecture at Little Old Coventry. Then thinking um, in the, so that's kind of 70s, the 80s saw, of course, the birth of the Black Art Group and the, the kind of West Midlands and Coventry connections um, there are, are quite clear. Uh, the Herbert Art Gallery, which is the kind of one of the two main galleries in the city, hosted one of their um, most significant exhibitions. And then the third is a slightly more obscure um, strand of research, which took place at Warwick University, which is actually in the city of Coventry. Um, and that was something called the Cybernetic Culture Research Unit, which led on to ideas of accelerationism, um, and cyber feminism and has all sorts of legacies. So these are three strands of activity and research that are largely forgotten in terms of the, the importance of the city and its and and that as a kind of crucible for birthing these these research um, things and, and birthing kind of all this artistic activity and um, an output. So we're looking back at some of those forgotten histories essentially and seeing what resonances there are with artists working today. And of course, the crossovers between these, between these as well. So I think there is just about time to talk briefly about some of my writing. Um, I have been the editorial manager of a contemporary art magazine called This Is Tomorrow for some years. Um, so that role is, uh, includes commissioning reviews and interviews and so on with, with artists from, from all over the world. Um, as Jenny mentioned in the intro, I'm also a, uh, a writer myself. So I, I write art journalism for magazines like Art Quarterly, which is the art funds uh, magazine that they produce. I write for an online platform called Photo Monitor. And then I've written lots of um, pieces for artist publications and essays um, when AN had a kind of commissioning, oops, a commissioning pro, or there's photo monitor, um, when AN used to have a commissioning um, news section. Um, so that's that. And then lastly, I work also for an organisation called New Art West Midlands, um, which I mentioned to one or two of you when I, when we were speaking individually. The um, 
the purpose of that organisation is that we, we're a visual arts network that supports artists and curators and writers in the region. So we, we have a lot of professional development activity, a lot of research. We're part of a national network. We have um, investment and support from um, six universities and art schools within the region. So we kind of work across a number of contexts and sites um, working as i say to help artists do what they do mainly um, offering bursaries and residencies editorial commissions um opportunities and a lot of kind of relationship broking brokering and networking um which again is something that i do quite a lot of generally and something that i've kind of tried to do with one or two of you as well as as we've had our had our individual chats in terms of introducing you to um to people that i think you might be interested in so that's the um that's the slideshow i think i don't think there's anything after that no nope, we're done so i'll stop sharing and then if anybody has any questions we could have a little chat